So your snowblower breaks down and you don't want to have to pay to have it repaired because it's really expensive and you don't want to mess with yourself and you don't want to pay the cost of a new one. So if you've ever went on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, they have gotten lots of used snowblowers for sale and for many different costs. Now later in the video, I'm going to be telling you guys about what, what the best price is for a used snowblower. Now this might be different in your area, but we're gonna be talking about what prices can, should be in Wisconsin. Um, so we'll be talking about what to look for when buying a used snowblower on a single stage and a two stage, right after this. Hey everybody, welcome back to Online Small Engine Mechanics. I'm your mechanic Cole, and today we're gonna to be talking about what to look for when buying a used snowblower off of Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. Um, there's a couple things to look for on both machines, uh, both the single stage and the uh, two stage. Um, not so much on the single stage, but we'll start with that anyways. Now, the top three things to look for on these would be the paddles, that's number one, uh, the electric starter, which is optional, and the chute rotation. So we'll get into that first. So we're starting off with this Toro single stage. So the first thing to check would be the paddles. And now these wear these paddles wear out over time. And if you buy a snowblower with worn out paddles, you're not gonna get a good throw from the snow out of the machine. And these are kind of expensive to replace. That's why I don't like single stage snowblowers. But um, they are good for some people. Uh, and the best way to check and see if these are worn out is to take your fingers and just kind of put them in the back after putting the, uh, the uh, paddles sideways. So just take your fingers and put them in the back of it. And see, my fingers are only sticking out a little bit. So these are in good shape. And usually when these get worn out, this scraper bar right here gets worn out as well. So if, the, if your paddles are worn out, then chances are the scraper bar is worn out too and you'll need to replace both. And some of the newer Toros actually have pre-drilled holes in the paddles that are indicators when these are worn out. This one's older, so it doesn't have that. Now, this snowblower is equipped with electric start. And this is a customer snowblower, but I did sell him this snowblower. And this electric start doesn't work but he's fine with that, he's able to pull start it. But for some people, an electric start is necessary for shoulder problems, etc. Um, so if the seller says that the electric start works, I, what I would do is I would bring a, a short extension cord and see if there's any open outlets near you to see if the, the electric start actually works. And if it just spins and doesn't spin the engine over, that, that is proof right there that the, the gear is worn out and that, I mean, it's up to you whether you wanna buy it like that and replace it yourself. But I'll tell you right now, these Toros are not fun to take apart. There's a recoil had to be replaced on this one and it was not fun to replace. So just keep that in mind. And also the last, thir last thing would be the chute rotation. Um, so you just want to be able to make sure that you can spin the chute both ways and that none of the gears inside where you turn it are seized up. And that's, that's what you should check. Oh, another thing, the belt. Now, some of these machines wear the belts out real fast. So if, the, if you are buying this thing and there's snow, I would fire it up and try it out in the snow. Now I've sold machines to many people and they don't always check and make sure that it throws snow. I know it throws snow, but they, know, they don't check that. Now that's a great thing to check, otherwise the paddles will spin, but it won't throw snow. Now if, that's, if this is a problem, you can check out one of my previous videos on how to fix a snow blower that won't throw snow and that should solve your problem just by replacing the belt. So that's it for the single stage. And now we'll move on to this, uh, the two stage. So now we have this Craftsman two stage snowblower 
or a half Murray, half Craftsman. <laughs> so what you want to check for on this is, first of all, does it run? And that's obviously something you should check with the Toro as well, but that's a two, two stroke and this is a four stroke. So something to check on here would be the oil. So check, check the oil and make sure that it's at the proper oil level and that it doesn't look too dark. Now, mine's darker because I've used it a lot and I will change the oil at the end of the season, but that's something to check. Just ask them when you ask the seller when they recently changed, if they recently changed the oil, just ask them their regular maintenance schedule for these. Um, you know, make sure it has spark. Obviously you'll know that if it starts. Um, same with the carburetor. Um, and it, with the chassis of the snow blower or the frame, you like like the Toro. You want to make sure that the the um, chute turns and it's not stuck or seized up. And it, if it has electric start, you want to check that too. My electric start broke off, so I took it off. And most importantly, is you want to check the auger gearbox. These can be a problem because people hit stuff and they think they just break a shear pin, which is these pins right back here, but they don't. They break the gearbox sometimes. That's what I have over here. I'm working on somebody's snowblower and he hit a piece of asphalt and broke the whole gearbox. So what you want to check for is just take your hand when it's not running and you don't have to go real deep, but just grab on. And if it, it's, if it moves just a little bit, then your gearbox is fine. But if it moves a whole ton and you can actually rotate it all the way around by hand, that's a defective gearbox. And as I said, you can choose to buy it like that and repair it yourself, oh, uh, entirely up to you. Um, uh, next thing to check would be the friction drive system. So what I would do is I would start this up and hold the lever down and hold it in place and just make sure that it's able to drive and that it's not losing any power. What I mean, what I'm, and what I mean by that is if it is trying to gr it pull you along with the snow blower, then it's good. But if you hold it back and the wheels spin, but it won't pull forward, then it has sort of a, a defective friction disc, which is underneath the snow blower in the drive system for it. And last thing I can think of to check on this would be the uh, belts. And you can bring a, a ratchet and socket, or you can bring your impact. I believe these are 10 millimeters to remove to remove this belt this uh belt cover and just look at the belts and make sure that they're they're 100 percent good there's not a whole lot of wear in them because belts do go bad in these two stages because they are meant to throw heavier and bigger amounts of snow so it does wear out a quite a lot faster um so that is most things to check on these two-stage snow blowers. Uh, I don't think there's anything else. So now we'll talk about price. So prices with these snow blowers, um, and now this is just in Wisconsin. Um, you may live somewhere else in the Midwest or uh, somewhere else where prices may be different, but uh, these are prices for the Midwest. So on average, you'll see these single stage snow blowers going for a lot of money. And usually if I were to buy one of these for myself, I would spend probably a minimum of a hundred dollars and a maximum of 170 bucks, just because these are, some of these are older. If it's brand new, maybe consider spending on the 200 $220, but don't don't go anything over the $220 mark. This one's older, and um, if I were selling this to somebody, I wouldn't sell it for any more than $150. Um, 
but that's just me. And that's, like I said, this is in the Midwest and I know what these sell for because I sell these a lot. Um, two stage snow blowers. Um, now this snow blower here is 20 years old. And if I were to sell this, um, and we'll just say that it had the Craftsman auger housing on it, I wouldn't sell this with a Murray auger housing on it. Um, but if I were to sell this right now, I would probably sell it for probably a hundred and forty to two hundred and forty dollars, um, and that's for kind of an older older one. I wouldn't sell a twenty year old machine for two hundred forty bucks, but I would sell a little bit newer one for around that, and. Obviously, if you're buying a gently used one that's under three years old, consider spending a little bit more money. Just kind of look at what regular price is at your local uh, tractor supply or farm and fleet, um, and just compare it from there. So that's what you should pay for a snow blower on average. So there's a few things on what to look for when buying one of these. Um, now, I'm sure some of you are probably wondering, what are some brands to buy? What are the best brands to buy? And my answer to that would probably be uh, Toro. I like the Aaron's brand. Uh, the Cub Cadet brand's good, even though it's made by MTD. Um, and these older Craftsman Murray snowblowers are very nice, I like. The uh, reason I like Cub Cadet is because it's got the three stage, and that's the only one that I know of got th that has the three stage. So that one's really, really nice. Um, so again, there you have it. That's, that's some things to look at when buying a used snowblower, and I hope I helped you out. Um, if I did, please uh, like, subscribe, and if you have any questions or want my advice, please comment. I usually get back to everybody on their comments. Um, thank you for watching, and have a great day.